the ultimate island sanctuary guide for the low cost of subscribing to the channel no, okay fine i'm joking i'm joking but that being said i'm going to try to have everything in this one video if i forget anything or if you think it's very helpful definitely put down in the comments below and i might put it in the description or pin the comment just to get people the information as best as possible so without further ado everything that you need to know there are 10 ranks to island sanctuary i wouldn't worry too much about the xp needed for each level if you go through the quest system and are like willing to take the time sometimes with some of the time gated things you will get to about level nine ish with all the xp that's given for the quest you will have to do a some you know gathering beyond just the gathering you need for each of like your workshops and your granaries and there's this little route that i'll show right now that got me about seven thousand an hour but realistically i wouldn't worry about grinding this out too much i would just get the mats you need for your buildings and for your like tools and stuff and then you know you get passive xp every single time you feed your animals and you know pick up your crops and pick up crafts from the workshops for your blue candies as i call them every single day or every single time you pick up those crafts and that xp will be more than enough over time to get you to rank 10 but with all the unlocks so if you haven't started yet you start out with a stone hatch right away at level two you get the net so you're now able to catch small animals level three you get the stone hammer which allows you to get copper ore limestone and rock salt and at level four you unlock the second upgrade to the cabin, croplands, pastures, pathfinder. You get a tree fort unlock and a windmill unlock. This also will be noted that you will only be able to build one of these at this time, like the towering tree fort. However, as you level up your island, there's plenty of space for all of the buildings that are going to be added. So I wouldn't worry about forgetting anything or like worried about if you're going to be excluded for something. I wouldn't worry about that at all. At level 5, you get the Shovel, Pathfinder 3, Granary, and the Bathhouse. At level 6, you get the Copper Scythe and Restraints, so you can catch medium-sized animals. And you get upgrades, so you can upgrade your Workshop and Granary to level 2. At level 7, you get a Bronze Gig. Your Cabin will go up to level 3. Your Cropland and your Pasture go up to level 3. And Pathlander is level 4. At level 8, you get the tools of the bronze break axe and the sporific, if I said that correctly, and your final upgrades to the workshop and the granary. Level 9 is the last Pathfinder quest. You get to unlock the lighthouse and the final quest that'll give you the glamour set for everything. And then at level 10, you only unlock flight. As you get it, you get more and more things. I would highly suggest as soon as you get a tool unlocked, you build that tool because that tool gives you the ability to gather everything that you will need for that next set of upgrades. Now we're talking about gathering. So these are all of the materials that you can gather on the map. I'm going to have them like periodically showing up of the general location that they are. Right off the bat, you can gather pumpkin seeds, cabbage seeds, palm leaves, apples, branches, stones, clams, lava, coral, isolwort, sand logs palm leaves vines and sap then at level three after you built the stone hammer you will be able to get copper limestone and rock salt then at level five after the shovel you can do clay tin sand couple of seeds parsnip seeds oslum the raw island garnet the spruce logs the hammerhead sharks and the silver ores come from the workshops you can't actually physically gather those then at level six after you get the copper scythe you can harvest sugar king hemp and cotton and at level 7, after you get the bronze gig, you can get the isle fish, the jellyfish, the squid, the isle berries, the onion seeds, the tomato seeds, the wheat seeds, the corn seeds, and the radish seeds. These seeds will come from the Cropland 3 vendor. That means after you get Cropland 3, you will be able to buy those seeds that I mentioned. After rank 8, you will get our last upgrade with the bronze break axe, and you'll get the lugicide, granite, or whatever, the iron ore, and the quartz. All the locations will have run through on the screen by now, but if you're ever worried about anything, I'll link down a guide below that is extremely helpful. One thing to note is, if soon as you hit like rank 3 for example, you will probably need copper ore and limestone in order to upgrade your cozy cabin and your crop plans at level 3, so I would suggest those are some of the first things you gather. If you unlock a tool, those are the things you're going to need to gather next, so you might as well work on those. One other thing to note about gathering, 
The respawns. They respawn as soon as you gather 11th node. There can only be 10 empty nodes out in the map at one given time. It is not time based. So if you see something that you really need to gather like apples or something like that or hemp, you just have to make sure that you gather around in like loops of like 10 to 11 so that once 10 nodes are now empty, your available node will respawn. Cropland is incredibly simple. Whether you buy the seeds that you need or gather the seeds of your need, everything takes 48 hours to grow and you have to water it once per day and then you can gather it. Automation works really well here. I'll cover that later. However, it's just recommended that you use two of each seed. There's no point of really min-maxing. If it rains on the day, your crops will also be watered, but just make sure you plant everything and water it every day and then gather them every other day. And that's basically all you need to know about the cropland. Pasture like croplands is incredibly simple. Uh, the basics are here are you need to feed your animals once per day and then you can collect the leavings or poop if you want to call it that. I just call it I'm collecting poop every single day. You just feed them. And there's different levels of feed. It's the sweet feed, which is the apples, will get them up to content. Green feed will get them up to chipper. And premier green feed will get them up to gleeful. To get green feed and premier green feed, all you have to do is take the crops that we just made. You take them in batches of three or six and you craft whatever you want. So just whenever you're uh, gathering or getting stuff from your croplands, you can use that to make food. So that's the basics of it. You just uh, feed your animals and then gather their leavings once per day. Petting them and like other than that uh, just brings joy to your heart. So <laughs> it's not really a waste of time if you're getting something out of it, but it won't do anything other than, you know, make you happy on the inside. There's no additional benefit to that. So then rare drops have a chance to drop at everything except hostile. So unhappy, content, chipper, and gleeful all have a chance of dropping rare leavings except gleeful has a higher chance than unhappy. Now here's a breakdown of what every single animal can drop. The alligator can drop a claw and a fang. The pakalu, or I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, can drop a fleece and an egg. The apakalu of paradise can drop egg and fleece. The aroch can drop milk or horns. I'm sorry if I butcher pronunciation once again, but all of this should be in the description for you to look at. Black chocobo can do feather and fur. The blueback can drop an egg and a feather. Chocobo can do fur and a feather. The Coblin can drop a fur and a carpace. The Dodo of Paradise can do a feather and egg. The Gulpadon can drop claw and a carpace. The Gulpadon Pop can drop a carpace and a claw. The Goldback can drop a feather and an egg. The Goobul, the Goobul, 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 can drop a flaw and a claw. The Grand Buffalo can do a horn and milk. The Ground Squirrel can do a claw and fur. The Island Billy can drop a horn and fleece. The Island Doe can drop fur and milk. The Island Nanny can drop milk and horn. The Island Stag can drop fur and horn. The Lemur can do fur and claw. The Lost Lamb, aka Sheep, can drop fleece and milk. The Opa Opo can drop claw and fur. The Orany Carcol, I think that's the Black Sheep, can drop the milk fleece. The Paisa can drop claw and fleece. The Star Marmot can drop fur and claw. The Twinkle Fleece, which always runs away from me, can drop fleece and fur, but I wouldn't know that. The Wild Dodo can drop an egg and a feather, and the Yellow Cold Bin can drop Carpace and Bang. So those are basically all of the things that you need to know, like can drop what, and that's basically everything you need to know about pastures. Now I ran through all of the animals and what they can drop, and now I'm going to run through all of the locations of the animals and like where they are. There's a map on the guide that I'll link down below. They did wonderful work on this, but uh, you can use this as a reference. Before I get too far into it, there are three types of animals, small, medium, and large. You have different requirements and different levels needed for these. Small animals you can catch right off the bat, medium animals you can catch at level 6, and large animals you can catch at level 8 and above. Note some of the rare animals, and I'll cover that also in this section, you will need to have flying in order to get to some of the areas. The net needs a branch and a vine to craft, and you can catch a lost lamb, an opal opal, a apakalu, ground squirrels, coal bins, beach combs, and twinkle fleece with this. Restraints need three hemp and one copper ore at level six. And these are your medium animals, which you can catch a wild dodo, a doe, a chocobo, a goldabon pup, and a paisa, or whatever the giant mount thing is that everyone loves. Now you need a sporific or a large restraint in order to get these or a large trap. And you need two larvae, 
one sap and two jellyfish to catch these. These are lines. These are alligators, bullbacks, bluebacks, nannies, and archons, or those giant elephant looking things. So those are all the large animals and their locations are as followed from small animals are lost lamb and the orny black lamb can be found at location 20 and 23. You can catch these at almost all times. However, the black lamb, you will need fair skies. The lemur you can only catch between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. And that will be at the location of 20 and 26. The lemur can also be found in this location. The pakalu can be found at 19 and 11. And the Pakalu of Paradise can be found in the same location, but only between the hours of 12 and 3. The Ground Squirrel can be found at 15, 9. And the Star Mammoth can be found at the same location, but only between the times of 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. When I'm talking about times, I do mean in like in-game Eorzea time, so don't be confused with that. The Colbin can be found at location 20, 13. And the Yellow Colbin can be found at the location of 27, 19 with a requirement of fog needing to be up to find this. The beach comb can be found at 18, 12, between the hours of 12 and 3, and you will need rain in order to find this. The twinkle fleece can be found at 22, 21, between the hours of 6 and 9 p.m., and you will also need fog in order to find this. Wild dodo can be found at 16 and 12, the dodo of paradise can also be found at 16 and 12, but only between the hours of 3 and 6. The island doe and the island stag can be found at 21 and 19. However, the stag has to be between the hours of 6 and 9. Chocobo can be found at 20 21, and the black chocobo can be found at 13 11. However, the black chocobo does require clear skies. The golden pup can be found at 30 11, and the golden can be found at 30 11, but at 12 a.m to 3 a.m. The Paisa can be found at 25, 28 at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. but requires fair skies. This is one that I think you need flight for so you might have to wait till you're at level 10. The Archos is a large animal and you will have to find this at location 12, 17. Same with the ground buffalo but the grand buffalo requires clouds to be out. Island Nanny can be found at 26, 24 and the Island Billy can be found at 26.22 between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 p.m. The Blueback can be found at 18.18 and the Goldback can be found at 31.18 when it is raining. Alligators can be found at 17.24, basically the start of the area by the pond right away and it can only be found between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. while it's raining or having showers as your weather. And then the Gobbleback can only be found at 33.16 between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. while it's cloudy out. Now, if that was a lot for you, this will be on the screen the entire time and hopefully it is in the description below. It might be abbreviated. Once again, if it's not, it'll be in the guide that you'll be able to get down below. For the rare animal spawns, that would be the beach comb, the twinkle fleece, paisa, alligator, and gobbleback. Basically, these are a chance to catch it every single time. It's not guaranteed there is like a rarity to it. It's not like a shiny one. The animal will be there under these conditions. A chance comes in with their ability to catch it. So make sure you have a lot of traps available. And also, probably most importantly, do not have all of your animals under marmot automation if you do this because you will not be able to release that animal if you would like to replace it with one of these rare spawns so just keep that in mind so for the pasture this site makes everything extremely simple and goes over everything i just ran through so it gives you all of the animals that you can capture and what they are the location you're going to find them and what they drop so basically everything i covered and the time base of the rare animals then it shows you the weather-based animals. And then at the very bottom, these are the like characteristics of animals that need both. So if you are looking for one of these, like a black chocobo, it'll tell you the time and when to enter in. So like the Paisa, flying required. This is the location. This is the time. And if you're in the game, you have to leave your island before 8 a.m. Eorzea time. And then you queue in at 12.05 p.m. Eorzea time. And then you can filter out by animal that you need if you're looking for one. So if you're like 
after your mortal enemy, the Twinkle Fleece, you can search just by Twinkle Fleece. And as you can see, there's a spawn window tonight. If not, you have to wait three days again. So you better catch it. But yeah, I'll have the link to Lala achievements down below and definitely check it out and use it as you need. I'm not going to cover the buildings too much as I did a lot when I was talking about the ranks, but the basics of the buildings are when you unlock a rank 2 cabin, you unlock the rank 2 pasture and cropland. Same with when you hit rank 3 with those. When you hit max rate on your workshops, all of your crafts sell for more, so basically each rank increases the price they sell for. And as you increase your granary, the amount of rare materials that you get from your expeditions 4x. So the first time you get 2 at level 1, 3 at level 2, and 4 at level 3. Landmarks, you get 4 locations for these. The windmill, the tree fort, the boiling house, and the lighthouse are all contained within Island Sanctuary. If you would like the water fountain, you will have to like replace one of these and you have to do work outside of Island Sanctuary in order to unlock it. If you want the water fountain, you have to do the expert crafts for the hardware, the resin, and the lumber, two of each, and then you can be able to get a permit in order to craft the water fountain. So if you're looking for that, you're either going to have to buy these items off the market board or become an expert crafter. Crop lands are pretty simple. It doubles your available plots until you hit rank three, which you will have then the ability to buy seeds and you have marmot automation. With the pastures, you get 20 slots at rank three and automation. Pathfinder is basically the quest system that goes along with these. You need to do these in order to unlock basically the upgrades that you need and be able to build more of like the granary, the workshops, or your landmarks. You're going to need a total of 6,000 of the blue candies in order to do this entire quest. So maybe hold on to those while you're still on your leveling journey. Next, we're going to talk about the granary. So there are basically five locations you can choose from that you will gather mats from. I highly suggest if you're still leveling, do Wild Woods and Fatal Falls first as you're going to need spruce logs and raw garnet for level 6 upgrades of your building. After you get level 3 granary, it's probably most efficient to try to maintain 12 of each of the rare materials from each of these locations. You can do this and maximize the basically the full benefit of the top 5 crafts that you can need that we'll be covering in the workshop next. So basically starting out you want to do Fatal Falls and Wild Woods as you're going to need 9 spruce logs and 6 raw granite to be able to maximize all of your workshops and your granaries and then possibly silver ore if you're going to build your lighthouse. Other than that just try to maintain 12 of each material or if you're low on certain materials and you don't want to gather i would recommend that you select whatever that location is lastly i'm going to cover workshops and i'm just going to give you the basics so you can get out what you want to put into it this is basically effort based and you can wait till other people basically tell you what you want to put in or you can like figure out the effort you want to put in yourself so one of the things that isn't covered about is groove, which is basically how much profit you're going to get from each of your items. To build this up, it's just based off the number of crafts you do in a week. So you get five out of seven days to craft in the week and the other two days your little marmots go on strike. So you want to early on in your week of your first two days, basically you want to do as many four hour crafts as possible. And then your last like three days, there's essentially trying to do longer crafts to increase the amount of profit that you get from your time. You get 24 hours per day per workshop in order to craft. So you can just use that to manage your like ideal plan that you want to do for the week. The general idea is six four hour crafts for your first two days and then you have like other things that are good for profit, such as 4686 six, or 4488. Eight. And then there's like a combination one if you still need to build groove, which is 44466, four, six, six, which is now five crafts instead of six, but still pretty good. You can use that as your basic plan of how you want to set up your week with your crafts. Then there is efficiency bonus, which is basically if you craft something in the same category as the craft before it, you get an efficiency bonus, which is basically you get more profit. Categories are on the like side here, so if you would like to, you just match up the craft in the same categories in order to maximize your efficiency bonus. Your first craft of every single day should be a four hour craft because your first craft cannot be efficient. 
So just basically figure out what you want to start your efficiency bonus on, whether it be profit or not, and then do a four hour craft to start your day to then maximize your efficiency bonus. Good rest days, I think, are the first and the last day of the week because then you have the opportunity to gather mats and then you can make a plan after the Tuesday reset in order to know what plants or items that you need that are going to be efficient for that week. This comes into popularity, supply and demand. I'm not going to go too in depth on this, but basically if something is low in demand and low in popularity, it gets a bonus. And then things that are high in supply and high in popularity, there's almost a negative multiplier, which decreases the amount of profit that you'll get. So the idea is you want to pick up an item that is not very popular with almost no supply, and that'll be the maximum amount of profit you can make on that item. This changes every single week and the weeks are dependent on the reset and they stay for that entire week. So you don't have to worry about the influx from day to day too much. This is why they said try to keep 12 of basically every single crop or rare item that you get from the granaries in order to maximize the amount of profit that you get. Now we're getting to the absolute min max portion of the video. This is probably something that a lot of people skip to and basically the rationale of how to min max your island because eventually this is all we ever care about. So this is going to talk a lot about workshop. However, we have to come up with some basics first, like planting strategies with the crop plants. There are two basic methods to this. Uh, the first one would be two of every single crop. It's basically going to be able to cover everything. The reason there's a min max method based off crafts and what each craft needs there's a set a lot amount of crops that you will need and set crop amount of stuff from your pasture that you will need so there's a reason that there isn't eight plots of tomatoes because there's not that many crafts that use tomatoes that will come up in a single week hence the min max idea of it so they they came up with these soft caps based off all of the crafts that are available in the game and came up with the result of you needing three plots with beets, one plot with a pumpkin or a potato or a potato or whatever you want to call it, then two plots of the cabbage, parsnips, tomatoes, corns, berries, onions, and wheat. This will allow you to cover up basically every single craft over any given week, whether it's needed or not based off what is popular in that week. I'll cover that a little bit more in a second. So eventually you will be able to come to this point. I suggest using the balance method and then just holding off for one week to build a surplus of items in your inventory. Same with the pasture. And the pasture, it's a little bit different because obviously everyone wants to flex with all their rare animals. So having one of each of the rare animals, a lost lamb and two of the coal bins will be like essentially your min max or your what most people probably do for those of you who don't care about rare animals it's a little bit more simple and definitely quote unquote the ultimate setup for leavings aka poop from the animals but if you want that it's going to be a lost lamb an orny coracle ground squirrel or an opal opal a lemur or a star marmot an apocalu a pakalu of paradise two colbin a yellow colbin an island doe a chocobo a black chocobo a beach comb or a gulpadon pup times two, a gulpadon, an archon or an island nanny, an island billy, a tweakle fleece, an alligator, and a gobble. So some of those are rare animals, some of those are not. And this just makes sure, based off of the crafts that are given, that this will allocate you to make sure you have the guaranteed leavings that you want for your workshop crafts that any given week can possibly throw at you. This is a little bit different because like some weeks you will not actually come up with enough materials if you have all of the rare ones. However, this can be alleviated if you take like a week off of trying to like min max the workshop and build up a surplus of your items. You should be fine in whatever case because these amounts are close enough. That's just my suggestion, but I gave you the absolute min max for both the pasture and the croplands. Now we're going to get on to like the in-depth workshop and the groove is not necessarily one of the most important building blocks. I should have probably covered this a little while ago, but popularity and supply modifiers are basically what is the most important thing here. And then groove is secondary because a very popular 
modifier is a 1.4 multiplier where groove at the end of the day is only like 0.35 so probably focusing on popular and supply modifiers is going to be more advantageous than groove itself however earlier in the week you should still like work on building up your groove because once all of these modifiers come into effect you have a, like a like 2.65x multiplier i think at the end of the week i think that's absolute min max so you're getting like almost three times the amount of blue candies you can for a single craft and then normally would be affected so like keep that in mind and kind of still work on that we want shorter crafts earlier on in the week to build up into the end of the week things to note popularity is set the day that reset happens so your popularity modifiers won't change that much your supply modifiers are what changes so this is where generally taking maybe the first day off of every single week is important because it gives time for that supply and demand to change and allow you to prepare for crafts for next week however some weeks for instance this week it was better to take off day three than day two and for some weeks like the very first week it was better to take off day seven based off demand so there is some insight that you have to pay attention to this the idea of it is find very popular or high popularity crafts to make every single week or every single day of the week with high supply or a need for supply so non-existent and non or insufficient supply of these items and then this is the best way to get a higher multiplier on items and this is why you want to avoid some of those things that are higher supply in the week so that the supply comes down so at the end of the week they're insufficient so you get a higher modifier it's something that you almost have to pay attention to every single day just like any other like stock market thing it's literally like animal crossing all over again so for example, this week I took off one and two, had some very simple crafts, days one and two, and days three, four, and five of my rotation, but actual days of the week were five, six, and seven, were higher, very high popular crafts with insignificant supplies, and that was about ironed out on Friday. So it was easier to be able to like accommodate for my plan for the week so like on the day five which was third day for my marmots where like the sheep fluff rug the hora and the sheep fluff rug just flip flop back and forth for the entire cycle and then day six i had to adjust a little bit because i actually didn't have the mats for it and the spruce round shield and the crook which were all eight hour crafts so you only had three of it i had to change out the crook for a four hour craft so i kept the two spruce uh, round shields and then i changed it to a woodworking craft i don't remember exactly what it was to replace the crook so i had two spruce round shields rather than two crooks for the day six craft and then the day seven craft i did the boiled egg and the scale fingers flip flop i actually had to change my boiled egg to a necklace after uh i think two of my workshops were filled because once again i didn't have enough mats it's just like one of those things you could replace a butter instead of a boiled egg in this instance um but like as you can see and even as i say that please do not like use this every single week because this is dependent to the week of like september 18th as i'm recording this you have to like keep that in mind so next week it'll be very different you have to pay attention to what is in need in your supply and like what is popular in your week and understand how to read these like there are tools in game that are literally like sort out by popular demand and by supply and you can use this to identify crafts that you know will be good for the week and then you just have to match up your four six and eight hour crafts in order to fit as many as possible into a 24 hour span with the mats that allow for you so this is why i say build up a surplus because eventually you'll be able to cover up every single craft regardless one thing i forgot to mention is the granary make sure you have 12 of the high-end mats because that's probably the most amount you'll ever need at any given week at any given time once again you can build up a surplus of that but that is kind of a conclusion of the absolute min max portion of the workshop and i hope it's very helpful for you now with all of that said, I would keep all of your blue candies until you're level 10 and then you can use them for automation, which is the last thing I'm going to cover. Automation 
basically every single paper itself once you're at level 10 or 9 essentially you break even every single day on the amount of profit that you get from your leaf droppings or your crops it is automatic there's no downtime you don't have to worry about watering or anything you just have to make sure you pick up from your marmots every uh, eight days because they can only hold a maximum of 20. Same with the animals, they can only hold a maximum of 20 leavings. So you have to check them. I would recommend like every six to five days or whatever. Just like get in a pattern of like, I'm going to check my island every two days if you're going to maximize your um, automation. And just note that you cannot change out animals if they're automated. It costs about 300 of your blue candies to automate completely. And based off of max granary and leavings, if you have the max animals in there you will definitely be breaking even on your little blue candies but this is hopefully an everything inclusive ultimate island sanctuary guide if i forgot anything please put it down in the comments down below it is greatly appreciated and hopefully this is a resource where everything is in one place but as always i hope you have a great day